500 years ago, this was an impenetrable fortified city. Today, it's the capital of one of the most stunning destinations in the Caribbean. There's three things I want to share with you about my recent trip. So welcome to San Juan in Puerto Rico. So I spent time in San Juan in Puerto Rico just before the pandemic and there's some things I want to share with you today that, that go beyond the usual top things to do. These are really reflections about this place. Before starting, let me just say that Puerto Rico as a country has a lot to offer. It's much more than San Juan. It has really rich history and culture, amazing food, pristine beaches, impressive mountains, sensational weather, relaxation, adventures, and everything in one little Caribbean paradise. But today I just want us to stay in the capital, in San Juan. And as always, I'll share my experience in three parts. For me, this is the first place we have to visit once arriving to the city. The old San Juan or El Viejo San Juan is essentially a stunning and perfectly preserved colonial village. There's a lot of tourists here, yes, but you know what's interesting? Most of them are from Puerto Rico itself. I do speak Spanish then I could recognize the accent and I was actually impressed by the number of uh, Puerto Rican tourists. Think about it, if we visit our own country, then the place we go must be really amazing, right? So we went straight away to Plaza Colón in San Juan, a great place to get a flavor of the history of Puerto Rico and, and the Spanish crown. In fact, in the center of this square, they have a monument of Christopher Columbus. As we followed the traces of the old wall, which protected the capital, we passed San Cristobal Fort. And again, it was built by the Spanish to protect against any potential attack. To this day, that's one of the largest fortifications that Spain ever constructed in the New World. Then we crossed this Calle Fortaleza to take a look at the amazing colorful buildings in San Juan. This was actually a good moment for us because, you know, before going to San Juan and you do your own little research, you always see these colorful buildings. Okay, this was the place. We took advantage and we went to this place called Chocobar. A local person recommended this to us. And it's in fact a fourth generation family owned chocolate shop. We also bought some stuff in the supermarket and I was shocked by the size of the products, like super, super big size. If you come from the US, probably it might be normal for you to see a two little orange juice or, you know, three little milk or industrial size butter. I, I guess for me being based in the UK and Europe is probably less common. On the other hand, I get it. It's probably better to buy this way for big families to save money. But I love to hear from you if that's the real reason, because I really don't know why everything so big. Eventually after that we arrived at the old bastion area. It was interesting, there was a random live concert so we stayed there for a while. We tried some local food and enjoyed the local vibe, the music and yeah, just have fun. We also visited the totem, a magnificent obelisk constructed in memory of the indigenous people of the island. And the final big stop was this castle called Castillo San Felipe de Morro. Essentially a fort constructed to protect the island from different attacks. And this became the flagship of San Juan itself. When the night comes, we can choose to stay in the old San Juan, which we also did for a few nights. Oh, we can go to a super local place for a little dance. This is La Placita. This is definitely not a tourist area, but highly recommended. Okay, first of all, if we want just to have a drink and a chat with friends and stuff, this is not the best place. This is super loud. People dance everywhere, even on the streets. 
This is a place for party. By 7 p.m. the place is packed with people from all ages. Everyone is dressed up, drinks in hand, shouting over the music, dancing in different bars and, and, and so on. It's really, really cool. The interesting fact is that during the day, this is actually a market square. So there's a farmer's market, a bars, a bunch of restaurants, and at night, it's like a transformation. Like this is a place where locals get some street food, drinks and lifestyle, some music and dancing in the square till the early morning hours. La Placita is also the place to participate in or watch salsa dancing competitions. Perhaps the final observation I have here is that if we plan to take Uber, most likely it will be cancelled as streets are very narrow and it's such a busy place that meeting the driver is very, very challenging. So for us, taking a taxi instead was the best option. And because it's a really busy place at night, it's always worth keeping our eyes open and staying aware of our surroundings. As you know, both Spanish and English are the official languages of Puerto Rico, but Spanish is without a doubt the dominant language. Please do not assume that since Puerto Rico is the US territory, everyone is fluent in English. Most people I met actually didn't speak English fluently, and some didn't even understand. Of course, if we go to a tourist location, activity, fancy restaurant, hotels and stuff, they will speak English. So my recommendation or observation if we want to get out of these results and experience something more local is to learn a few words and sentences in Spanish. I think it's important to know that while Puerto Rico is legally a part of the US, it's culturally part of the Spanish-speaking world and particularly connected to the Caribbean route. If we don't know Spanish at all, I strongly recommend to invest a few dollars in a pocket Spanish-English dictionary before we go, or Duolingo, or whatever app we might be comfortable with. Saying gracias is always a good thing and if we don't know how to break the ice, we can talk about sports, they love baseball, basketball, football and even boxing. So from my experience making the effort to speak at least few sentences in the local language will help us and help them have a better time. If you like this video, you might also want to check some other videos I have in the Caribbean islands. And if you're enjoying the content, my vibe and what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel so I can keep making these videos every week. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Do I talk too much about languages? Hmm. Maybe yes.